Hello everybody, our next camera is a Polaroid Land Camera 104. It's made from 1965 to 1967. It was their first lightweight plastic version. Uh, it has 114 millimeter f8.8 uh, lens. It's a plastic lens, two elements. Uh, the f8.8 is for when you're shooting with the color film, 75 originally, or 100 with the Fuji. It's f42 when you're set to the 3000 speed black and white film. It only has the two apertures. It doesn't have the uh, daylight or indoor-outdoor setting like some of them. It does have light and dark and controls. we will do minus one and plus two steps. An interesting thing, while I had this thing apart working on it, is how they do the light and darken. It's actually sliding this uh, graduated filter over the light sensor. Also, that extra blade on Polaroid flashes is actually pushing up this filter over the sensor. So they're getting a lot of mileage over that, out of that uh, one little photo cell. Uh, being one of their cheaper ones, doesn't have a tripod socket. Plastic body makes it a little bit lighter. Most of the stuff inside the film chamber is still metal. This one does not have a rangefinder. It has a fascinating uh, zone focus system. You move this up and down. Uh, you put the top line at the top of someone's forehead and then you set the distance to where the bottom line is at someone's chin and that's how you focus on a person. You just uh, use this to set the, the zone distance and then estimate the distance if you're shooting besides an adult person's head. Kind of a strange thing because the mechanism itself is really as complex as a rangefinder. It has a tinted mirror uh, coming in and then uh, set, moving the image over to the other mirror which is half silvered and it has this funky ramp thing that moves up and down to uh, move the distance scale and these little diamonds that uh, show you the edges of your image. Further referred to as an image sizer. I haven't seen that in Polaroid documentation, so I don't know if that's a made up word or not. Uh, this one needed quite a bit of work. The battery was really gunked up. Uh, I cleaned it off and I still wasn't uh, getting continuity. I, it wasn't working. So I ended up taking this apart and tracing the wire. Turned out this connection was okay. So horses, not zebras, I came back and this connection was bad. Cleaned it up and just tack started it on there. I got one shot out of it and then the flash wouldn't fire. So I ended up uh, working back inside here. Interestingly, these uh, what looks like a circuit board isn't. There's a board underneath it. It's all that flexible circuit material, including what you solder to. It was pretty dried out and I think I had cracked a trace or it may have already been cracked while I was inside there. So I ended up uh, using this thin telco wire and basically going over all of the traces and replacing them. It's kind of funny because I had chosen this one next because I'm going to uh, do a project with it. So I thought, eh, a 104, it's working. It's one of the cheap ones. If I screw it up and kill it, you know, it won't matter that much. So I ended up having the rangefinder apart, replacing the foam in the shutter assembly, replacing all the traces in the shutter assembly, and repairing the battery connectors. So, so much for just grabbing a cheap one to use for an experiment. Anyway, after I do horrible things to this camera, I'm going to shoot with it again. So, I'll see you then.